World Cup fever right here in Charleston. We have a live report coming How up. How about this? We even had a few teams in our area start practice at 12 8 30 this morning. The seven story building, the Morris building. As for police, they're asking you if you have any information on this case, please call the number on your screen. At any basketball game, you have your usual sounds of the game. Just But for one capital player, he hears none of that. I think this team is really special. They're really nice. They really help me. And especially the JV team really communicates with me. Armed with his interpreter of 14 years, senior Nakwe Little was born deaf and is one of only two seniors on this season's Cougar squad. The interpreter helps me understand, but all of all, it is hard. Basketball is, basketball is harder. Listening and watching and working and learning learning what to do on defense and how they and how they change the plays. Now Thursday night was the senior night and the usual JV starter McQuay got to start with the varsity team. <laughs> and that bucket was the second of the game. A cool moment no doubt for Little who didn't play organized ball until entering high school. And he's already looking ahead to next year, where he plans to attend Gallaudet in Washington, D.C. School is really nice, really big, many, many, and it's all deaf. And, and, and I can communicate with them. It's easy for me to talk. In the future, I want to get, I want to, I want to work. I'm going to get a good job, and then I'm going to get, I'm going to get a girlfriend, and then, I want to socialize and meet new people. Reporting in Charleston, Brandon Smith, 13 News, working for you. It's the start of trash pickup on the west side. Yeah, it's, it's a very dangerous job. With frequent stops. Probably around anywhere from 500 to 600 a day. And especially on busier streets, safety can be an issue. You know, they can see you a mile away, you know, with these shirts. It's like, well, why do you come at it, you know, 50 miles an hour? Ready? Just last week, the governor signed the slow down to get around law. It's a big deal, I mean, for us, because, you know, every, drivers sometimes get careless. You know, you got cell phones, not really focused on the road anymore. It states drivers can't go more than 15 miles an hour around an on-duty waste service vehicle. That's very important to us for him to do that. And here on the west side, it also includes one of their busiest streets. Martin Street, you know, maybe a little will definitely shoot past, you know, if they can see out in front of you and if it's clear, out they go. I usually I call a foreman on Washington Street if it's too bad for us, it's a lot of pickup, and I have a foreman to come in there direct the traffic. You still get people that want to, you know, do what they want to do. And as crews go about their long 10-hour work days picking up your trash, they hope you, the driver, will do your part as well. It all comes down to, you know, people observe that, you know, and notice that. We just continue to work and pray that don't nothing happen to none of us out here every day, you know. All right. In Charleston, Brandon Smith, 13 News, working for you. And then right behind is the semi. For senior Ben Stevenson, it's a morning he won't soon forget. I get on the bus and I'm about halfway back down the middle of the aisle of the bus and I look through the back window and um, I could just see the semi, it was stopped, then all of a sudden it was moving towards me and it was coming pretty fast. And I didn't know what to do, so I just dove towards the first seat I could and like wrapped my arms around it. And there was just this huge crashing sound. I felt the seat hit me in the chest. And I didn't realize until later, but my glasses went flying off my face. His mother was also scared. She's a mother of six who was in the family basement when she heard about the wreck. 15 year old son comes downstairs, asks me if I'm okay because he hears this loud boom. Well, and I said, I'm fine. So he goes back upstairs and he runs back downstairs after that and says, Ben's okay. The bus has been hit by a semi. I'm like, what? As any parent would, your, your heart kind of stops for a moment and locks up and fear for uh, the fact that uh, in every moment you can't protect your child. For Coral, accidents like this are always a worry. It's one of my greatest fears because I have seen buses just, uh, semis come right past the buses, not even worry about the signs being down or anything. They just blow it by. And now every morning she'll pay extra attention as Ben boards the bus. I'm still shaky. Now I'm, I'm, I'm afraid for him to go on the bus. Now I'm going to be looking every single time hoping that nobody doesn't stop and hit the bus again. 
I mean, and I just, I'm just thankful. Ben is really thankful. He credits his faith for protecting him during the accident. I just want to, you know, thank God that, you know, God led me through this. He loves us all, and uh, Jesus is my personal Savior, and I know that he'll protect me. So uh, I know that God loves us all and will protect us through these things. In Mason County, Brandon Smith, 13 News, working for you.